morning, everyone. We're just gonna let people trickle in and we'll get started shortly. Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Marisol Ornelas and I'm the Associate Director of uh, Enrollment Management and we thank you for joining us tonight. We are excited to welcome you and spend the next 45 minutes uh, to go together. Um, this virtual webinar focused on co-curriculars and athletics is part of a series that will focus on specific highlights to our upper school program. We invite your family to ask questions through our Q&A feature and after our presentation we will leave time for question and answers. Tonight, we are joined by Mark Silver, our head of school, Mike Peller, head of our upper school at Hillbrook, Tim Downs, our director of athletics, and Vanessa Holmes Silverman, middle school and upper school performing arts teacher. To begin, I'd like to invite Mark Silver, the head of Hillbrook School, for a few welcome remarks. Thanks, Marisol. Um, hi, my name is Mark Silver. Um, I'm the head of Hillbrook School. I've been the head for 15 years, and um, we are so excited to have you joining us for tonight's um, upper school webinar, which is focused, as Marisol said, on um, co-curriculars and particularly on performing arts and athletics. Um, so as you hopefully know at this point, but if you've been participating in other webinars or have engaged with the school, you know, we are a school that is nearly 90 years old. Um, we've been in Los Gatos with a JK-8 for almost 90 years. And over this last few years, we have launched this fabulous new upper school in downtown San Jose. Um, and as part of this, from the beginning, we knew that we would be building on an exceptional history and tradition around athletics and co-curriculars. Um, you know, from our founding, we've had students up on stage and we've had amazing athletic performance. There's a number of Hillbrook alums right now in college who have gone to top theater and art schools across the country, NYU, USC, School of the Arts in Chicago, and multiple kids who are playing Division One. Um, athletics across the country. We also have some people who've reached the highest levels, including a former World Cup soccer player. Um, so for a long time, we've been a school that has been committed to athletic and performing arts excellence. And at the same time, we've been a school that has made those opportunities available to all students. Um, and you'll hear a lot more about that tonight. Um, with this as a backdrop, we knew that as we started the upper school, that we would be designing an exceptional program from day one. So our third hire, after we hired the upper school head and the director of college counseling, was our athletic director, Tim Downs, who will be um, coming on in just a few minutes. And Tim has um, was an athletic director at multiple universities, as well as most recently at Westminster School in Atlanta, which was the number one rated sports program in the country. So we knew we were getting somebody who knew how to build a best-in-class athletic program. In performing arts, we were fortunate that we already had an exceptional person on our staff. Vanessa Holmes Silberman, um, who had been overseeing our middle school musicals and choral programs, um, as well as other uh, performing arts programs in, in our middle school, is an exceptional person. You'll get a chance to meet her tonight. And she did a wonderful job of building these programs over the last few years. So in terms of uh, what's happened already, we're only two months old, but already we've launched a full range of programs. We had a football team, a volleyball team, cross country team this fall. Um, we had our first ever upper school play, the Alibis, which played for three nights last week in downtown San Jose. 
Basketball season is just getting started, and after Thanksgiving break, we will be having our first rehearsals for our, our first uh, tryouts for our musical 13. So as you can hear, while we are a new upper school, we are a long-standing school, and we are a school that has a deep commitment to the arts and athletics. Um, with that, um, I am going to turn this over to our fabulous upper school head, Mike Peller, who's going to introduce some other people who are joining us this evening. Thanks, Mark. Um, it's, it's wonderful to be here. This is our third webinar. Um, we had one looking at our academics, academic program, one looking at immersives, and now looking at our co-curriculars. The opportunity to co-create a high school is a really unique uh, chance for our students. And we think about this as four years of founding families. And one of the questions that, that we hear a bunch is, um, is there a compromise that students have in joining a new school? Um, what do you miss out on? Um, and, and, and there's this idea that you must be missing out on something if you're, if you're getting to, to start a brand new school. All of the excitement of building clubs and starting tradition sounds wonderful, but um, are there things that you wouldn't get? Um, so I wanna just, you know, Mark alluded to some of these already, but I, but I wanna look at what's happened just in the last three weeks to give you a sense of how full this program is. Um, in the last three weeks, we had a spirit week that was started by one of our students. We had our first homecoming dance also started by a group of our students. We hosted a Friday Night Lights football game. Um, our volleyball team in their last game had an amazing win. A number of students had enormous growth in cross country, setting personal records. Um, we just last weekend, or just last week, had our student-led conferences, which for 20 minutes, students were speaking with their advisor and their parents, talking about their academic learning. Parents left these conferences saying things like, I've never seen my student so calm and introspective. Another student, or another parent said, I've never seen my child um, so deeply in love with their learning. They've always been interested in doing well in school, but never have they seen them so activated. Um, in the last three weeks, we've had two open houses, launched a boys and girls basketball program. And then as Mark said, you know, we had this, uh, our theater production, uh, The Alibis, which was so amazing. The, the, the experience is deeply full. We are in, the, in our 13th week right now uh, of, of school and so much has happened already. Uh, and um, we are excited for you to learn a little bit more about what happens outside of the classes, some of the most important aspects of high school. Uh, and as always, um, the last thing I want to share is, as always, it's an invitation for you to come and learn more at any point. We want you to be discerning in this high school process. There is a lot of exciting things that we have to share, and we hope to be in conversation with you throughout the next couple of months. Um, but for now, I want to welcome up onto the stage our amazing director, Vanessa, to talk a little bit about our theater program. Thank you so much, Mike. I am very happy to be here tonight to share with you my uh, half of the co-curriculars in our upper school, the performing arts. When I took over performing arts at the upper school, I could not have been more thrilled with the idea of building a fully well-rounded theater program with uh, high school students. And so we jumped right in with two shows in the first year. As Mike said, we uh, performed Alibis last weekend, three performances at Trinity Performance Hall. We had uh, 23 students involved in the production and it was a fully student run production in terms of all tech, all backstage actors, and it was it was so fun to watch the students develop from the mentality of I'm just going to try something new that I've never done before until the end of the rehearsal process, becoming actually pretty close to experts at what they were doing. And then in a couple of weeks, we will be holding auditions for our Spring Musical 13 by Jason Robert Brown, which will be performed at Create TV in March. One of the things that I feel is super important with theater education is to give students both knowledge and control of how they present themselves on stage. When we go into a production, we talk about casting and how things are cast. And in fact, a really fun story about the alibis is that 
I decided that I wasn't going to traditionally cast. So for those of you who have done theater and done shows, you know that often you walk into a scary room full of directors and you read something or sing something and then an adult decides your fate. And while sometimes that's very effective and I definitely do that on occasion, for the alibis, we actually chose our roles out of a hat and it was the most profound experience for me and for the students because some of the roles that they chose were not roles that they would have chosen for themselves if they you know, were given a full choice. And so it was fun to be able to say to them, now you're an actor and you're going to act. The other fun part of this was watching the backstage and tech crew basically take the show as their own, run scene changes, call the show, do the lighting, run sound. It was just a very, very powerful experience for all of the adult team to be able to step away and say, okay, the show is yours. I couldn't have been more proud of this group of students. And I also loved watching the 10 weeks of growth that everyone had. We walked away wiser, tighter as a team. And, and these are things that theater can bring to our students. I love the fact that Hillbrook's belief in taking a risk fully supports theater. It's not always the most comfortable thing in the world to get up in front of people. Even for me as a seasoned professional, it's not, it's not always comfortable. But we have asked our ninth graders this year, and we will continue to ask all of our high school students to take a risk, to try something new. And when you look at the picture in the bottom right-hand corner of our cast of 22, many of these students had never done theater and took a risk, and they came out so gifted and so surprised at their own skills and talents. And I truly believe that though we don't always intend to raise the next Broadway star, although that would be great and, and wonderful for all of us, that is not why I went into theater education. I love what happens when you gain the confidence. It impacts every other area of your life and allows you to become successful in, in anything that you choose to do. So should you choose Hillbrook, which I hope you will, I also hope that everyone will take a risk to be a part of one of our productions in some way so that you can experience that team and that confidence building experience. I am now going to pass the mic. Oh, that's not true. Actually, you know what? I brought a clip. I shouldn't just talk about it. The best thing to do is to show you. So at this time, I would like to share with you a clip from our performance, The Alibis. And before we do, I just want to set this up, that this play was many little plays within a play. This was the one of the final scenes of the show. And I don't want to give too much about it away, except that one of the characters has a very, very unsightly mole on their neck. I'm going to hear your song, no games, not the area. Oh my god! Oh my god! It broke us so bad! It's getting stronger! <laughs> oh, Gary Moore! Oh, Gary Moore! That's not a code! There's the eagle fly at daybreak! This mole needs to be removed immediately! But I also want you all to take a good, long look. Because you may never see a mole this disgusting. Well, oh, yeah. quickly, because I really, really need to be on my way. Yes. I just wanted to say there's a very specific reason I went into medicine. And that's to help people with very, very, very gross things on their bodies. And you know, you're just that. <laughs>
but does this maybe smell like something? Very good. Can you identify the scent? Cabbage? Feet? Boogers? Despair? Public bathroom? No, it's insecure billionaire. <laughs> That's coming from me? <laughs> Travis Gilman, New England Journal of Medicine. We heard about this woman who liked to doctor for science. Can I take a few photos? No, absolutely. <laughs> Enough already. Please do the things that should be on my way. I'm now very late and it's very important that I murder my wife this day. It's the 75th anniversary of the day that she stole my loot. You really shouldn't do any murdering before you get out after your surgery. You really should rest. I'll rest the day Leslie Arlington is dead! Jay Leslie Arlington, I'm sorry, didn't you hear? He died like two minutes ago. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. No! Impossible! He's throwing a party tonight! Well, TMZ is reporting it, and they're never wrong. <laughs> TMZ? You never heard of it. It's true. He was found dead as well. Here's a picture. No! 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 He should have been mine! Mine! Wait! He's wearing my same suit! <laughs> Thanks so much, Vanessa. The the show was amazing. And I think what was one of the most remarkable parts was so many of our students were involved and those that weren't directly involved were coming and, and um, showing up in the audience. It was a whole school experience. Um, before turning this over to Tim, though, I do want to um, ask you just one more question about the way in which you have supported our CORAL program and also to talk a little bit about how that starts with, with an initiative driven by students. Absolutely. So um, we have a very strong CORAL program in our middle school. And many of the students came to me at the beginning of the year, even during the summer, and said, we have to have choir. It is extremely important to our students. And they wanted to continue that experience. So they they actually took control of deciding who was going to be in it and explaining to their classmates who had never done choir, this is how choir works. Come and join. Come and try. And we we have been diligently meeting and we will have our first performance on December 20th. Actually, that's not true. We performed a couple of weeks ago at the Scott Center event, but our official first performance will be December 20th. And I actually got word about 15 or 20 minutes before I came on tonight that one of our choral choir members who's here with us tonight, Addie Crisco, is in California Allstate. She was uh, tried out 700 California middle school sing uh, and high school singers auditioned for the 789 choirs. And she was selected as one of the top 100 singers in our state. So I could not be more thrilled with not just the initiative, but the amount of hard work that our students are willing to do when they believe heavily in something. So it's, it's this combination of entrepreneurial, dedicated students and, and passionate, excellent educators, uh, which means that really anything is possible. We just ask and create the opportunity. So so thanks, Vanessa. Um, I'm now going to bring up Tim uh, to the to our webinar. Um, and and Tim is, as, as Mark introduced, a remarkably experienced athletic director. Uh, and when and when he said yes to coming to Hillbrook, um, it was we knew great things were about to happen. And um, Tim, before turning it over to athletics, though, I wonder if you might recap the conversation or, or your um, uh, what you noticed when you came to the theater in terms of how the school showed up in that way. Well, Mike, when I got past the bitterness of Vanessa writing me out of the script at that, <laughs> that point, um, I, so, I, you know, I've spent a lot of time with our students this fall in van rides and you know, in between classes. And so I feel like I've um, had a pretty good feel for their growth and development. And um, something really I, I felt in the last two weeks, and I think I can absolutely tie it back to our students' involvement in the play, um, student-led conferences, that there has been a different level of maturity, the engagement in conversation, has been at a new level. And, and I said to Vanessa and Mike 
that it, it really feels like they are high school students now. And I, I, I think something that all of us have remarked on is that, you know, this year, they're not only the new kids on the block, they're the only kids. And, um, you know, one of the things that has meant is that they're forging their own path. Um, and that is, that's a great thing. And we'll talk about a lot of those great things and opportunities there. Um, but, but it also, they don't necessarily have the behaviors of upper class um, students to, um, to model. And, um, and it, it's been so heartening to see, and I saw it this week with some of our students who have started basketball practice. Um, they're really coming into their own. And, and um, for me, it was just um, a couple of observations and a couple of moments that um, told me that, you know, the future is really bright. Um, and, and, you know, we're at such a great time to have this webinar. You know, last year when we had these webinars, we were talking very philosophically and, and very hopefully. And, um, you know, now for me, I've got, a, we have a fall season to look back on, engage, you know, how are we doing um, with, with, you know, what we talked about. And, and one of the things we talked about was because of the size of the school and because we're new, there's opportunity for students to do a lot of things. And, <clears throat> you know, that is, so if you want to try a new sport, um, try something new, or if you want to play a sport in college, um, you know, what I've seen the best way to do that is to play a bunch of different sports. The reality of, of high level sports is so much of that happens outside of the school. So then the school becomes affinity. The school becomes developing well-rounded athletes. The school becomes connecting what you're doing in the athletic realm back to the classroom. And I, I, I've been able to see that in some very real terms. Um, you know, one of our students later will talk about um, the volleyball experience, but it, you know, this was a match. It was the, the first match that we won and we were, we were serving, I think we were down 25, 24, need to win by two. Um, this student who had never played volleyball before, and this was about halfway through the season, um, stepped up to serve and serve three straight points for the win. And, um, you know, that van ride back and then the classroom the next day, I could just see the confidence building. And, and that for me was everything sports should be. And, and, and so, um, you know, what we have intended to do is to give students opportunities to, to try a bunch of things. And this fall, it, it worked really well. Um, we had 75% of our students playing a sport. And I, I say what, what one of the great things for me was going to the play last week and looking up on stage and watching that clip that you all just saw. And um, all those students were playing sports. And I, the, the photo that you see in front of you, I, it, you know, there were some great action photos of football games and volleyball matches, but I chose this one um, because for me, this is this kind of captures the fall. Um, on the right of the screen there is our director of college counseling, Charlie Berkeley, who um, was a fabulous, our fabulous cross country coach. And you can tell by that photo that the bonding that happened, the community that was built, you'll see a lot of the same faces in there that were up on stage. Um, it, it was a great way for our students to connect and, and um, build confidence. And, and um, you know, I was, I was really proud of them. I was really pleased with how the fall went. Um, and I'm so excited for the future. And you'll see in this um, next slide, so this is going to be the home of Hillbrook Athletics. It's the San Jose Armory, and um, it is one of the coolest venues I've ever seen, and it, it, it will host our um, indoor sports. And you'll see there we've, um, for the fall, we had cross country for boys and girls, volleyball for girls, and we had an eight-person football team um, in the winter. Um, the Armory will be home of our boys and girls basketball teams, and then we have um, volleyball for boys in the spring and then track and field. 
And we chose these sports before we had a student body. And we chose them because these are the sports that are currently entrenched, have been built up nicely within the middle school. So it made sense that there would be an athletic progression um, all the way through the upper school. And what, what is neat now is that um, when we have a sense of student interest from our current class and our incoming class, that's how we'll grow the program. And, you know, we'll grow it smartly and we will look for opportunities to do sports that we'll be able to sustain and we'll be able to build successful programs around. And if this fall was any indication, um, then, I, you know, I, um, I know we will have great success in the future. Thanks, Tim. Um, and as Tim mentioned last year, when we were doing these webinars, everything was um, it was an idea. Uh, we we hadn't yet um, put the upper school into into life. Uh, and what's now remarkable, not only having our founding administrators and faculty, uh, but the most important thing is we have our students. Uh, and and what what better way to understand the school to, than to hear from our students in terms of their experience? So we're going to ask the three students to come on to. Uh, onto the webinar and uh, Tim and Vanessa are going to ask them a couple questions and then we invite you to put any questions you might have uh, into the comments section and then we can answer some of those questions live after these uh, first initial questions. So, um, so Tim, Vanessa, take us away. Great. I'm wondering if the students wouldn't mind to introduce themselves and also tell us how long you've been at Hillbrook so that we kind of can get to know who we're talking to tonight. Okay, um, I'm Kyle, and I joined Hillbrook this year as a ninth grader. Can you share what school you came from before, Kyle? Oh, yeah. I came from Keys Middle School and Lower School in Palo Alto. Um, hi, I'm Addie. I've gone to Hillbrook since fourth grade, so that's six years, I think. Um, yeah. I'm Alida. I joined Hillbrook this year and I came from Peninsula Middle School and elementary school. Excellent. Thank you so much. Tim, do you want to ask the first question? Uh, I would love to hear from you, um, all three of you. What, what was your highlight from the fall sports season? Carl, we can start with you. Okay, so um, I guess my favorite part was our final run. I was in cross country, and then so we ran the Dia de los Muertos 5K, and then that run felt really good because I saw the progress I had made. Like at the beginning of the season, it was difficult for me to run two miles straight, but like at the end with that final run, it felt so good because I I was really proud of myself because I ran the entire time. And I think I, I was really proud of my time too during the run. And it felt really good to just be able to like, look at my progress and just run. Great. Addie? Yeah, so similar to kyle i we definitely got to all see like so i was also in cross country and we all got to see our progress and i was already like kind of taking a risk with playing this sport i didn't i never like really done running as a sport before but i made a lot of friends through cross country so that was a big part of it and also i improved so much like at the beginning i thought like running a mile was so much and I couldn't run a mile without like walking but at the end I was running a mile in seven minutes and it was like crazy to see how much I improved and it was just really really fun yeah um I would say the highlight for me for the volleyball uh team was the first game that we won against mid Penn because it really just set the mood for the rest of the season and gave us the hope that we could win other games as well if we just like tried and worked together more as a team. Yeah. And you did. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, you three. It was it was really fun to hear the stories during rehearsals because I think, Tim, as much as you heard about the show, I was hearing about athletics and what was happening with you. And it, it was just fun to be able to celebrate all of those things together, which is actually leads to my next question because, Coach, you and I decided from the very beginning that we would never, ever put a burden of choice on our students and that we would do everything we could do to allow them to participate in both of our co-curriculars at the same time. And we went to a lot of lengths to create schedules that worked for that. And I'm just curious to hear from the students. I'd love for the three of you to talk to me about what it was like to participate in both a sport and a show at the same time and how you balanced doing both of those things. So I think um, it was a lot of fun participating in both the show and the sport. And because I I guess I got to hang out with my friends a lot, which is a lot of fun because what's kind of interesting was the entire cross country team participated in the play. And so I just got to see my friends a lot. And then, but I guess one thing that was helpful was that during theater time, while we were watching the show and we went on, we still had time to do our homework and then but also watch the show at the same time which was very cool to just see because when we first started it was kind of like a mess but then when we finished <laughs> like when we our final our, our three performances last week like it was very it was like so satisfying to see like what we did like for example I played the nurse and Rose. The nurse you got to see, I was re wearing the maroon red scrubs. And then at first, because as Vanessa said, we drew the rose from the hat. And so it was a bit nervous. I was a bit nervous, but I think one of the main things, I guess, was just letting loose kind of, because that was, for example, the first time I've ever screamed on stage. And then I just, once I got comfortable, I just let loose and then yeah, it turned out pretty well. I think. And and now, Kyle, you're actually known for your stage screams and your stage passing out. Uh -huh. <laughs> Who else can share about what it was like to do both of those things? Yeah. So similar to Kyle, again, it was I I really appreciated how you didn't have to choose between because I love doing theater. I like singing and acting but I also feel like it's really important to do a sport. So not having to choose between those was really, really nice and like less stress. And it was just like so much easier. So I really liked how Hoburg has that. Um, and it, I actually liked having both kind of like I was busy every day and I still had time to get all my homework done because of the time they give you at school. And it's like, it taught me like self like time management a little bit better like so i can get all my stuff done and it was just good it was a good experience having and i enjoyed having both of them at the same time um for me it was a little bit different because i was working backstage i wasn't actually an actor in the show but it was still a lot of fun to see the progress that all the actors made while also participating in the sport. Cause I would, on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, I would go play volleyball with my team and have so much fun with them. But then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'd get to hang out with um, the rest of the school, including my volleyball team. So it was a great experience to get to know people, especially cause I didn't know that many people coming into the school. Um, and it was just a lot of fun to watch people evolve and really get into their characters and yeah getting to see the show at the end was almost magical i guess so one of the things i wanted to ask you all um to think about and, and so y you played sports in in your middle schools um how has the hillbrook upper school experience has that felt different for you Kyle, we'll start with you. 
yeah. So I think participating in Heroic Alpha School Sports was a lot of fun, especially like because for one, we were the founding class, which I guess was kind of nice almost in a way because I guess I got to know everybody on the team, make friends with everybody on the cross country team. And then in middle school, sometimes I was a bit different because it felt I felt a bit more distant from the people who are on the same team, but in a different grade. And I guess I think in Hillbrook Athletic, they push us really hard. But if we struggle, they try to help us through it and and help us make a lot of progress with whatever we want to do. Right. Wait, what was the question again? So, Eddie, you played sports at middle school, Hillbrook. How was how did the upper school experience feel different for you? Okay. Well, maybe it was just because I was playing a different sport, but it seemed a lot more like friendly and like less competitive, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I didn't play any sports in seventh or eighth grade with Hillbrook, I don't think. But like in fifth and sixth, I think I played volleyball and basketball. And everyone just seemed a little bit more like competitive and like mean, I guess. Everyone was like, oh, you're so bad. Like if you if you like do something wrong, everyone was like, oh, she's messing everything up. But maybe it's because it was a different sport. Everyone was just nicer or something. But everyone was like so nice. And it was just a really great environment. I made so many like great friends and we all like got to grow and improve together. And yeah, like everyone got really close. Yeah. We all saw each other like at our worst. Like one practice, we all kind of started crying because it was like super stressful at one time. <laughs> and then like, but we all see each other at our best too after like we finish a race or like we all PR'd or something. So everyone just got super close and it was like just a great experience. Yeah. For volleyball, I did club in middle school. And I'd say it was a lot more stressful and, like Addie said, a lot more competitive because it was all about winning and just getting the highest score as a team. But at Hillbrook, it is a bit more chill. Like, you still want to win, but also you want to develop as a team and you want everyone to be able to develop their skills and be good players individually as well as a team instead of just aiming for gold and trying to just get as high as you can with the players that you have. Because as club, I had one game where I wasn't put in at all. And that was sad because I wanted to play, but I just wasn't like as skilled as the other players. But for Hillbrook, I really got a chance to play and advance in the sport, which was nice. So yeah, it was just a lot more friendly. I connected with my teammates a lot more. And it was just a better experience overall. Awesome. Thank you. I absolutely love the fact that at Hillbrook, you know, being at a small school is not a negative in any way, shape or form because you get to participate in everything. Like you said, Alita, you actually got playtime. You actually did the thing. And that's so important to becoming both an actor and an athlete that you actually get the time. So I have one more question for you. And this question is about risk taking and like that just right challenge that we try to do at Hillbrook. And I'm just curious how many risks, you know, you've taken this year in terms of both athletics and theater and how, how did taking the risk change you? Do you feel different after this first season of sports and the first show after being willing to take these risks? So I guess it's like a two-part question of what risks have you taken and how did that risk change you? Who would like to start? I think the first thing is because we had auditions for the play second week of school and since I joined Hillbrook as a ninth grader, I only knew one or two people. So that was kind of nerve wracking, but I decided to go for it and just audition. And then 
I don't regret it because that was the play and the community was just a ton of fun to just hang around. And another thing is I actually get, I get a lot of stage fright when I'm just speaking in front of a large audience. And I think one of the things was when I participated in the play and theater, I feel like that just reduced. And then I was able to just be myself and be more confident in, my, in myself after that. Yeah. Um, so I took a risk by doing a new sport and like doing cross country. That was like a big risk and like pushing myself so like harder than I ever knew I could like push and knowing like learning how much I could like do was really, really cool. And also with the show that we were in, we got like an option of how many roles you wanted to play because of how many roles there were and how many people, actors we had. So I ended up playing three roles and I learned so many lines and I didn't think I was gonna be able to learn all of them. Like it was so much, but then at the end, I, for the shows, we did it and we had all of our lines and we all had to push ourselves so hard. So like taking a risk and doing all those roles and taking so much like responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have to say, I don't know if this really counts as a risk, but I was most for the play, I was mostly nervous about doing backstage because I didn't want to mess up and then ruin the entire play. Um, but then I realized that I wasn't alone and if I messed one small thing up, it didn't really affect the entire play. It affected part of it, but that was probably just one scene. Uh, like if I forgot to bring a prop on stage, we could find a way to improvise and bring it on some other way. And a lot of the actors really helped with that by calming me down. And actually they were very good at improvising while we did mess up. Um, so yeah, that was awesome for sports. I'm not sure if I took many risks because I was playing a sport that I'd already played before, but I guess playing a new position because I was the setter this year and I'm usually playing outside or like libero. So that was kind of nerve wracking because I was learning a skill that I wasn't very good at, but still a lot of fun. Thank you so much, um, Kyle and Alita and Addie uh, for your authenticity in, in answering some questions. Um, if For folks that are watching at home, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, but I do have one more question that I'd like to ask for Vanessa and Tim. Um, and so let me frame it in this. As, as you heard Kyle and Alita and Addie speak, I, I think you will have heard our core values sort of echoing in their language, uh, our core values around be kind, be curious, take risks and be your best. Um, and then thinking about the latter two, well, really all of them, um, but but like taking a risk and trying something new, but also really like, like working towards something great. Um, Vanessa and Tim, can you talk a little bit about, you know, you know, we're 13 weeks into the high school, but as we think about four years building out the high school and then 10 years into the future or longer, how are we building programs that are both inclusive for all to participate in, while allowing people to compete or perform at the highest level? Yeah, that's such a good question because I I know for myself, uh, every time I go into a new production, I'm I'm pushing even myself to go further, to, to, to do better, to try something new, be more innovative. And I think for me, I I never think of a student as incapable or amateur it, it's just a mindset that i've had for for 25 years that i i look at a student and i see every amount of potential that they can have even far beyond what they see and far beyond what others see and so as i am looking at building this program up into you know the next four ten who knows how many years i i hope many years i i'm looking at 
the challenges that we can present the students in the repertoire that we choose to do. I'm looking at uh, the way that our students, both those who, like you said, have had a lot of experience and those who decide to try it new in, in giving all of them the same foundation in terms of acting and presenting and understanding the impact of the words that they speak on stage. And then I'm continuing to push each student individually to, to go deeper into their characters, into the stories, into their technique. And, and as we grow as a school, we will continue to grow in terms of the kind of repertoire and the level of repertoire that we can do. I remember when we, when I first presented alibis, the students were like, we can't do this. Uh, and, and I knew I had an absolutely no doubt they, they, these three will tell you that there were many times throughout the process where they were like, we won't do, be able to do this. And I was just calm. I knew we would, I knew we could. And, and so for me, giving the challenge and, and pushing everyone is about me believing in them and then being able to facilitate them believing in themselves as students and as actors, and then just, just keep notching it up a level as we go. Yeah, and Mike, so it is a great question because, you know, right now it's easy because, you know, we have opportunities for every student. You know, I, I mentioned that 75% and hopefully by the end of, you know, this school year, it'll be close to 100% of our students have participated in the sport. Um, and there will always, as we grow it, and as we listen to student interest, there will always be an element of, if you wanna play a sport, there's a spot for you. And there always, there always should be. You know, the other side of that is there are scoreboards, right? And we are putting ourselves up against other schools and, and we celebrate that success because it's great validation of why we play sports in schools. It's, it's the hard work, it's the discipline, it's the sacrifice, it's the putting yourself out there um, and taking risks. So um, I, I absolutely feel as we grow it, there will be um, an opportunity for everyone. And um, it, it is certainly not mutually exclusive, the, the success piece of it. And I, I, I think actually they go hand in hand very well. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Vanessa. And thanks again, Kyle, Addy, and Alita. Uh, and now we'll bring um, back up Marisol to share next steps with regard to admissions. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Okay, so um, you'll see on the screen that we have some key dates uh, regarding our admission process for the academic year. Uh, as a reminder, Hillbrook does not require you to submit an application for you to come up and sign up for a visit day. We have visit days going on all through December and January, so your family has plenty of time to submit an application and also visit our school. Additionally, if for any reason you are having difficulty getting school records or any teacher recommendations, please contact us directly at admissions at hillbrook.org and we can figure out how to best support you through the application process. And lastly, for those families applying for flexible tuition, the flexible tuition decision will come at the same time as the admissions uh, decision. And so uh, that wraps up our formal program for tonight. And thank you for joining us and have a really great evening, everyone.